This video is about the analysis of my voice recording from the incident happened on October 16, 2006, at the Clark Hall in San Luis State University. The entire conversation of the recording is downloadable from my blog and my website. Also, I made a previous video to share the entire incident. To summarize the incident, Dr. English Luik asked me to have a small talk in her office, and in the anthropology department, I was claimed as suicide. The police officers did not listen to my denying of what they said, and I was handcuffed and transported to the hospital. I'd like to mention several questions about the incident. I'd like to tell how I received a mental health record the first time in my life. If someone wants to claim me for a mental problem, I'd like to share what happened to me as the initial claim. I believe my case is much like how MK Ultra victims were locked up in mental institutions. Indeed, the CIA relates with SJSU and some professors. Question 1. Dr. English Rick was waiting me in front of Dr. Marco Menikete's classroom on the second floor of the Clark building about... Dr. English Rick asked me to move to a place where there was no witness around. For my real safety, I should have stayed in the place where people could see what Dr. English Rick, Sergeant John Laws, and another... Dr. English Rick wore a purple sweater and had a plain trouser. At the dean of anthropology department, she usually dresses up nicely. On that day, she had print clothes and looked somewhat upset. I turned on my voice recorder as the situation seemed strange. At the point, two police officers were waiting at the anthropology department office on the fourth floor. From this aspect, uh, you can learn the first transportation to the Santa Clara Valley Medical Center site. While Dr. English Luke and the SJSU police officers were acting strange, I was just heading to my classroom. Question 2. Dr. English Rick didn't tell me what the meeting was about. When I met her, she only asked me to have a small talk in her office. I asked her why, as my class was about to start. You can hear who was upset and who was calm from the... By the way, I received a phone call from SJSU Judicial Affairs Office in November 2006. It was a time I was trying to contact ACLU in San Francisco and other human rights organizations. The Judicial Affairs Office only asked me to make an appointment without telling me why. It was probably another attempt for a false accusation to lock a student up in either jail or mental institution. I think I see it. I know class is about to start. Yeah. Just, just by the Question 3. The police officers seemed to act as if they were doing a routine work. When I met them in the anthropology department, the police officers said hi and asked me to turn around to be handcuffed. And they didn't even try to check my mental state at all. And then they explained the concern of my safety and how they were told I might be making comments about hurting myself. They believed someone else's statement before they check how I was feeling or like my <laughs> How are you? Uh, these are uh, police officers from campus. Okay. And I think it's important. Can you make a favor and turn around for me? Question 4. Dr. Andrew explained the situation a bit. This part is quite hard to listen, but you can hear she says how she and Dr. Elizabeth was and others. Okay, we're concerned for your safety. Why? We were told that you might have been making comments about hurting yourself. No. No? No. Well, that, that is how we interpreted it. Elizabeth and I and several others have read your emails. We're concerned that, that you might, especially when you talk about the work you affect, that that's, uh, that's something that very much concerned us. And we, want, we care only about your safety. We want to make sure that you're going to be okay. And I know this is, must be very disturbing and frightening. Okay, I'm well. sorry that, that it's playing out this way. But. 
Joe says, I was contacting the SJSU Equal Opportunity Service for the investigation of SJSU students talking and harassment. When I contacted Dr. Rigzi Svartisen about two weeks before this incident, Dr. Svartisen warned me not to bring the discrimination case to lawsuit. And since I felt bad about Dr. Wise, I sent an email about apologizing how the situation would turn out to be a lawsuit or something because I was tired of how she and the student continued organized talking and harassment on me. Basically what happened is Dr. English Ruiz and the police officers believed the emails shared with each other about the concern. Question 5. Police officers handcuffed me even after I denied to be suicidal. If I looked cooperative, there was no need of a handcuff. Also, I had no idea why they handcuffed me as I was listening to what Dr. English Ruiz was talking. This is something much like a part Okay, we're concerned for your safety. Why? We were told that you might have been making comments about hurting yourself. No. No? No. Well, that, that is how we interpreted it. Elizabeth and I and several others have read your emails. We were concerned that, that you might, especially when you talk about the work you're effect, that that's, uh, that's something that very much concerned us. And we, want, we care only about your safety. We want to make sure that you're going to be okay. And I know this is, must be very disturbing and frightening. Okay, I'm well. sorry that, that it's playing out this way, but 